Today I'm going to show you in a few minutes how you can add some awesome 3D to your UI designs. Hey guys, it's Kaler. In today's video, we're diving into Adobe XD plus Adobe Dimension to create this awesome web design. If you're interested in content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I upload every single week. And with that said, let's dive in to today's video. To quickly go over the setup, it's a 1920 by 1080 artboard, and I'm going to turn on the layout grid, 12 column, and I'll lower that opacity to about 10%. First, let's start by setting up our typography. T on the keyboard for the type tool, then I'll just type in some text. Zooming in on that, today we're gonna to be using a font called Switzer. You can grab that from fontshare.com. I featured this in my recent video. I'll link that on the screen now for some great font resources. We'll set the first one to 14 points and medium weight. It's gonna be our smallest font, option or alt on the keyboard. Clicking and dragging will create a duplicate. Then we'll bump this one up to our paragraph font and we'll set that to 18 point. I'm gonna create another duplicate. This one's gonna be our heading font and we'll set that to 64. Then we'll increase that to a bold weight. And finally, we need one for our logo. This one we'll set to 24 point. With all of our typography now created, I'll click and drag to select them, hit the plus on character styles, and then we can just delete those. For our layout in the top left, we're gonna have our logo. And in the top right, we're gonna have a tag saying coming soon. Let's zoom into the top left, T on the keyboard for the type tool. And we're gonna set this to our 24 point font. I'm actually gonna right click on this, hit edit, and we'll adjust the logo to bold. We'll align that on that left-hand column and put that 60 points from the top of the artboard. Next, we'll create the coming soon tag. So with that text, we'll set that down to our smallest font of 14 point. And then we can drag out a rectangle, that's R on the keyboard, and just click and drag one out. Let's send that behind the text we just created with command left square bracket key or control left square bracket key. Clicking and dragging to select those, we'll center align them, and then command G or control G to group that together. I'm gonna double click to grab the rectangle, remove the border, and let's swap the fill, the rectangle to black, and the text to white. Finally, let's add a border radius of six to the rectangle. With our grouping selected, let's add padding, and we'll adjust these values, eight on the top and the bottom, and 12 on the left and the right. We'll vertically center that with our logo and then dragging that over to the far right side column. Actually, let's drag these in one column each just to give that an extra bit of spacing so they're on the second column on each side. Next up is our heading, grabbing our 64 point font and we'll just align that on that second column as well. This site that I'm creating is for quality design assets. So I'm gonna put my text in for that. Going down to fix text, and then scaling that to five columns wide. We can double click on the bottom to expand that. And then let's add a paragraph. I'll drag out a text area and we'll set it to our 18 point body font. Then I'm just gonna paste in some lorem ipsum for now. We can set that to 60% opacity by hitting six on the keyboard and we'll drag that 24 points below our heading. The last thing we need is our input and submit button. So I'll just zoom in. We'll create a rectangle. For this field, I'll style it with a border with a size of two, and we'll set it to black. We need to put some text in here, and that will be our 18 point font, and I'll just say enter your email. Now we can click and drag to grab both that and its rectangle, Command G to group it, and then we'll use the padding option to adjust the alignment here. 24 on the top and the bottom, and 36 on both sides. Then on the right side alone, we'll set that to 160 points. We can create a duplicate of this, holding Option or Alt, and clicking and dragging changing the text. Then I'm gonna grab the rectangle in our grouping, remove the border and set the fill to black and the text to white. Now we simply grab our grouping and set this back to 36 on the right. And we have a button. Let's just add some border radius. We'll also do that to our input field. And now we have our input field and submit button. Then we'll put 16 points or so in between those. And we'll align that 48 points from the bottom of our paragraph. We click and drag to grab everything here in the left hand column. And we'll go 164 from the bottom of that logo just to put that above the center of our vertical axis. Double clicking on the name of our artboard, we'll set it to UI, and then you can hit Command E to export that as a PNG. Now in Adobe Dimension, we need to set our canvas size to the same as our artboard. So 1920 by 1080. We'll set our zoom to fit canvas so we can see our work area. Selecting the environment on the scene panel, we can go down to the background and click on the swatch. Here we can swap to an image, and then we can select our UI export. And so we can see our design here in Adobe Dimension. Doing this allows us to see our UI as we generate 3D, and we can see what it's gonna look like as part of our design. Clicking and dragging allows me to move this around in the scene view. So I'm just gonna place this here on the right side of my design to fill out this blank area that we have. You can see these squares on the selection. So I'm gonna drag that down on the Y axis by clicking and dragging on that square. 
And then you can hold shift and click and drag on that square to scale all the different sizes equally at the same time. Holding option or alt will allow you to drag out a duplicate similar to Adobe XD. So this time I'll hold shift as I scale to make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to increase the Y axis just a little bit. We're dragging that up and then we'll drag that into a nice position. And I'm going to keep repeating this for a few different cylinders until I have a design that I like. On the toolbar on the left, you have these three tools, the orbit tool, the pan tool, and the dolly tool. Those are one, two, and three on your keyboard. And you can use those to move around in the scene. So I'm just gonna rotate the camera a little higher. And then if I hit two, I can grab the pan tool and I can better position how I want the 3D to align in my design. Once I'm happy with something like that, let's add a sphere now, just to add some variation. V on the keyboard will grab the selection tool. And here I'm gonna hold shift and scale down on all the axes at the same time. And I'll just click and drag to position that where I want in my scene. Then I'm going to create a duplicate of that holding option or alt. And then this one will be slightly smaller and we'll put that somewhere over here. So now that I have the camera looking exactly at the 3D where I want, I'm going to go up here and click on this star icon and then I'm going to add a plus. So this bookmarks my view. That way, if I were to accidentally move my 3D and I want to get back to exactly where I was, I can go back up here, select that bookmark and it will snap my camera right back to it. Finally, let's add a plane to this for the ground. I'm gonna hold shift as I scale this up and I'm gonna make it fill the entire camera there. That way we can add a bit of texture to the ground. So next we can go over here and in the filter by, we can change to materials. I'm gonna drag this mat onto that big plane in the background and give it a fill color of pure white. Then I'll do this for every element in my view. So we'll start with this back cylinder here. I want this to be white, but I want it to stand out a little bit more from my background. So I'm going to set it to a slight gray. And then this time we'll drag the mat to our sphere here. And this time we're going to set this one to a bright pink color. My color code is FF6399. I'm also going to set this cylinder here to that color as well. Then I'll set a few of these to yellow. I'm going to go with FFE14D. And finally, for some variation, I'll set one to blue. I'm going to go with 0A68FF. And then I'm also going to add one more cylinder, a little bit off in the distance to add more depth to our scene. Finally, let's add some lighting to this. So we'll click this sun icon here in the filter. And then I'm just going to go to the studio panel lighting, select that, and then we can hit the quick render to see what this looks like. And we can increase the intensity just slightly if we want it a little bit brighter. So I'll just set that to around 120. And then you can also adjust the rotation of the light. So I'll just set it to about nine degrees. You can play around with that and adjust the various shadows and where they're hitting. So I'm gonna go with nine. And so this is a quick render of what this will look like. So once we're ready to render this, we'll swap to the render tab. Then I'll select my main render, which is the name of our camera that we set up. So we'll only export that view. You can give it a name. Since we're rendering this with a background plane, I'm just gonna remove the PSD option and just set it to a PNG, and then we can select render. Now that my render has finally finished, I'll just drag it into our project. Send it all the way to the back with command shift left square bracket key or control shift left square bracket key. Our input field stands out a little bit, so I'm just gonna double click to grab the rectangle, select the eyedropper, and we'll grab that color that the ground plane has created, which is a slight gray. Then we can hit the live preview, and this is our finished design. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial using Adobe XD and Adobe Dimension to add some 3D into your designs. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe, I upload every single week. In the meantime, check out these related videos and as always, have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next one.